All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of our Madden 25 Connected Franchise Owner Mode Fantasy Draft Ralph Wilson Buffalo Bills YouTube Series. Today is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Episode 87 coming your way right here. Coming off a big 28-23 Buffalo Bills victory over the Denver Broncos, 11-2 on the campaign. Bills, Bills, Bills. Gotta love it. First things first, we go over to our accent, uh, ac actions, actions page. <laughs> Today we are starting uh, by upgrading our wonderful uh, DBs. We're going to start off with our corners. Drake Kirkpatrick, our uh, nickel uh, corner, really uh, doing a nice job for us so far this season. Um, playing in and really what is his primary spot. Drake Kirkpatrick, uh, as you can see, a pretty decent tackler uh, for somebody um, playing the corner spot. Um, definitely somebody who, you know, he, he lacks the speed to really be a number one corner. As you can see, we'll go down here to some of his other areas. His zone coverage is, is extremely good as well. Uh, but we'll go down his speed, jumping 87, agility 85, um, his acceleration, 88, speed, 89. As you can see, those numbers, not bad, uh, but just not numbers like Avante Davis or Dominic Rodgers Camardi would have. So we get his man coverage up a bit. It'd be nice to get his catching up a bit. Uh, but as time goes on, I think we're going to see more and more uh, Drake Kirkpatrick just really own that uh, that nickel position. Um, again, not somebody who needs a ton of speed to be effective. Um, just a solid tackler, solid coverage person. And someone who we're really lucky to have, to be perfectly honest, in that spot. Dominic rogers Camardi up next. rogers Camardi was off to a ridiculous start to start this season. Had something, I think that was six, it was six picks in seven games. Something just stupid like that. Um, has since cooled off, but that's okay. Uh, his man coverage, we got it up to 90 now. Let's go ahead, get his consistency up to four. Hopefully that'll help him pick off some more balls. In the meantime, let's go over to Vontae Davis. Our top corner, who has been almost uh, un unstoppable this season. He's been phenomenal. Had a bit of a rough game against the Broncos, but that's okay. Everybody has a rough game every now and again. Um, as you can see, we get his awareness up to 90, which is huge. His consistency, just a 2. It would be nice to get that up in the future. Man coverage, 92. His press coverage is 96. One of the best press guys in the entire National Football League. Um be nice to get a couple things up here play recognition let's go ahead get that up to about an 83 i think we should be able to uh to get it and we'll move on from there uh Vontae davis really in the prime of his career at the age of 27 um will probably start slowing up in a couple seasons but in the meantime let's just enjoy the fact that he is as good as he is um again right in the prime of his career. Meanwhile, we're on to Brian McCann, our Nick, or our dime back. Um, we can go ahead get his awareness up just a little bit, up to 82, which is nice. McCann, his man coverage is already very good. His man coverage, as we can see, is 92. Nothing we need to worry about upgrading there. Um, the main concern for me uh, at the moment is his play recognition because his play recognition is so poor. Um, I think we spend the rest of his points here. See if we can get this as high as maybe 68 if we're lucky. Uh, I don't know. We'll see exactly how far we're able to bring this number, starting at uh, a very measly 54. Uh, Brian McCann has been – he was he was quite bad uh, at the start of the season, to be perfectly honest. Since, though, ha has picked his game up, has been a lot more solid. Um, some, I, I'd like to see him continue to progress. Um, he is a free agent this offseason. We'll see if he's wanting to come back. I hope he is. Uh, I'd be willing to pay him um, probably what he wants, uh, provided it's not more than, you know, uh, you know as, as long as he's okay with making, you know, what he's what he's really worth. Um, but I'd, I'd be happy to pay him a uh, million dollars, maybe a million and a half, uh, to be a solid dime corner, uh, which is really what he is. I mean, he's a good cover guy. Um, has some smarts about him, but not dominant. You know, not 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 to a dominating level. He's not a press guy, not his own cover guy, um, and not a guy with blazing speed. Uh, but as we can see here, those upgrades go a long way from a can getting up to 83. Very nice. And then Jason Romano is last. Jason Romano, um, a 20-year-old corner who we're thinking at this point we're going to look at tr at uh, converting to a strong safety and. 
I just want to quickly revel in his numbers. We'll start at the high side. Hit power, 84. Speed, 88. Acceleration, 83. Tackling, 85. Injury, 85. A lot of great numbers. Catching, 78. Very nice. He lacks some agility, and he lacks a little bit of... Um, uh, a little bit of acceleration, but his strength, as you can see, is phenomenal. Um, jumping, not great, but that's okay. It'd be nice to make him a big hitter if we can afford it. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to get him, uh, just see his... Uh, actually, man coverage is pretty good for where a safety is going to be at. Um, his awareness, I know we've worked on that in the past. His zone coverage needs to be better if he's going to be a safety, um, because I play a ton of zone with my safeties. If we can even just get him up to... Uh, let's see. Today, if we can even just get him up to a 78, I'd be perfectly happy with that. Then after that, it's just the play recognition. We've got his awareness up, but the play recognition still needs to come a long way. Uh, so let's work on that. And uh, the big suggestion people have been giving me, because Chris Connie, it's looking like he's not coming back, which isn't, which isn't a problem, because Chris Connie, not a guy we have had our hearts set on, on bringing back. Um, but uh, if Jamarcus Sanford... Uh, if, we, if we're no longer wanting him to be a starter, then what we can do is flip Thomas over to the free safety spot, uh, just try and work on some of his finer uh, skills, uh, skills like, you know, the, the just, just a straight-up coverage, uh, that type of thing, his jumping ability, et cetera, uh, and then move Romano to the strong safety spot because Romano would be a beast there. He's not ready at all. Um, he's not a finished product by any means. And, again, and look, he's 20 years old. He's got a lot of time, even if we, you know, and he, he's under contract for four seasons. That's another thing. Keep in mind, as a, as a pick of ours, he's a fifth-round selection. He's got lots of time to develop and, uh, and improve. So there's no reason to, to worry about him uh, uh, slipping or, 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 falling, or uh, falling behind. For Jamarcus Sanford, in the meantime, let's go ahead and make him a big hitter. Um, try and get some more fumbles out of this team because we don't get a lot of fumbles out of this team. It'd also be nice to get his catching ability up, even if it's just once, um, just to <laughs> get some more picks. I know there have been a couple times where he's been in a position to make user picks this season and has put the ball on the turf, uh, keeping with our free safeties. Let's Actually, let's skip over Chris Connie as an upcoming free agent. I don't feel particularly inclined to to upgrade him, not necessarily because he's you know, not worthy of, of being upgraded or not worth upgrading, but just because if he does have some interest in coming back once he is a free agent, we can get him for less money if he's not upgraded. For Shamarco Thomas, we're going to go ahead and get his play recognition up to 80. Uh, if we are looking at making him a, uh, a true free safety, we need to start working on uh, his uh, kind of finer techniques, so to speak. Um, so we got his... His zone coverage way up um, to 83. Let's hell, let's get it to 84 to spend the rest of the points. And his play recognition up. His awareness already not bad at 84. Um, there's a few things we'll need to fix. Uh, get his consistency up. But aside from that, I think he could be a pretty seriously good free safety. Um, a little more geared to the strong safety stuff, but his acceleration, his speed, uh, make him a huge threat back there. His agility. He lacks height, but his jumping, I think, makes up for it. Stamina is great. Uh, his strength is lacking, but that's pretty typical for a free safety. Not a problem at all. Zone coverage is good. Awareness is there. Uh, is what it needs to be. Man coverage would be nice to get up a bit, but we don't play a lot of man with our free safety. Uh, block shedding is, is, is fine for a free safety. Uh, tackling is very good. Pursuit is good. Play up, you know, he's, he's pretty solid across the board for that free safety spot. Um, so we'll have to look at that for the future. And as you can see, he, uh, up to an 87 now, which is ridiculous. Again, given the fact that he's 23 years old, pretty phenomenal. The backup Marcus Gilchrist, let's go ahead, get his play recognition up a bit. Let's even get it to an, about an 80 level. Um, for me, just as a general rule, I like, uh, within reason, of course, you know, it's not the first thing you need to upgrade. You know, if you have a receiver whose catching ability is 60, uh, but their awareness is bad. You you know you don't upgrade their awareness all the way until you know b before spending a single point anywhere else. But I'd like to have my safeties um, and my DBs, mostly just my young players. Period. But especially those DBs, um, both their kind of intelligence figures, which I I consider the the play uh, play recognition and the awareness. Both of those numbers over eighty 
before I, I really consider them to even be starters. Um, just because I don't want mental mistakes uh, costing you a lot. And, and that happens with safeties. Because when a safety makes a mental, you know, when a, when a defensive tackle makes a mental mistake, it means they're in the wrong hole and the, 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 the running back gets through and, and the linebacker needs to pick him up. When a safety makes a mental mistake, it means there's a guy who's going for a, uh, a 60-yard touchdown pass. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, it's higher stakes, particularly with those safeties. So I don't want to, uh, even, even consider letting some guys play unless their numbers are, are up for Sam Martin. We get his awareness up for wh- whatever that means for a punter. I don't know, but, but we upgraded it and his accuracy is up as well. So as you can see, getting on up there for a lot of our guys, um, some really, really nice progression across the board this season that I'm happy with so far, three games to go. Man, the season has flown by. This whole series has flown by. I can't believe we're almost at episode 100. It's kind of ridiculous. Scouting, let's go ahead to our wide receiver spots. Um, Doug Baldwin is being uh, uh, a bit of a a thorn in our side when it comes to negotiations. Um, And it's looking like Mario Manningham is not going to be brought back. Um, So we're going to keep going ahead with our... uh, wide receivers who we were scouting we're looking for kind of a bigger body guy we've looked at the middle third round prospects so far we really liked ben harrison his catching needs work but his catching and traffic is nice looks like he could be a really good um a really good player to have in the slot um i know keenan allen of the uh the san diego Chargers is another kind of bigger body guy who doesn't have a lot of speed but still is a huge threat uh in that area um, I also want to make sure we're checking out the run blocking of each of these guys. We last left off at Alan Rotherham. Um, so let's keep going with him. His strength is a C, catching and traffic a B. I like that. Route running is a C, awareness a D. That could be better, but that's okay. Uh, not the end of the world for a guy who's not going that high. Run blocks a C, injuries an A, stamina is a B, impact block a D, personality an F. Okay, on to the, uh, the next guy. Let's keep going here with all of the wide receivers on the list we go down to where we've been checking out next up is another bigger body guy davy is still 6'1 219 out of portland state 21 years old i like how young he is let's go ahead his strength is a b i like that catching is a c catching in traffic a b seems to be along the same line as a lot of these guys route running release a c awareness a c his uh his run blocking is a C, impact a D, injury only a B. I'm not crazy about that. His stamina a B, that's fine. So he's a possibility. Um, a really little guy here, Matu Likely, out of Ottawa in Canada. What an interesting place to be from for, for an NFL wide receiver. Um, Nico Perro, I think, might be the better guy to take a look at just because Likely is 5'7". We're looking for a, big, a bit of a bigger body guy. Uh, let's go over to Perro. He's 6'3", 213 out of Florida A&M. Nothing against Canada. <laughs> His jumping's a B. Catching's a B. Strength a C. Catch and traffic's a B. I like this kid a lot so far. Release is a C. Route running a B. I like that. Awareness is a B. I like that a lot. Carrying's a B. That's a lot better than most receivers. Run blocking is a C. Would have liked to see a B there. That's okay. Impact a C. Injury only a B. Stamina a B confidence a two i like that personality is an f well all these guys have a personality of an f so this nico Perro, i think could be a good uh fit for us in the slot um his acceleration uh and speed might be a bit of a concern uh but i like his jumping his catching ability uh coming in his awareness is good his route running is pretty good his strength is fine his size is good he'll come to us if we draft him as a 23 year old uh, and one of the best parts about him is he's going to be available. Uh, well, I shouldn't say he will be, but there's a very good chance he'll be available at the end of the third round. Um, if not, who knows? Maybe he'll fall late fourth, even early fifth. Uh, so we can keep that in mind. Anyways, we're going to get rid of the uh, Danny Danny Watkins negotiations. And we'll enter negotiations with Doug Baldwin. Our last offer to him was $3 million in salary and 80000 additional, uh, uh additionally as a bonus every season. Um, which doesn't make much sense because his desired contract is $11 million over four years. Right now we're offering him a full 
two uh, one point three million dollars more than that. Um, I don't know if he wants more guaranteed money uh, or if he just wants more money overall. Um, what I think we should do is uh, offer him three million dollars in salary and up the guaranteed money a little bit, um, make it one fifty. Um, that way, uh, he's still not difficult to move. For example, if he turned, because I, I don't, I don't see us trading Doug Baldwin in the meantime. But if he's, you know, if he signed this deal at the end of it, he'd be twenty nine years old. And if we traded him in the last year of the deal, he would, uh, we'd have to pay him one hundred fifty thousand. Hell, let's just go up to two hundred. We'd have to pay him two hundred thousand dollars out uh, against the cap for us. Hopefully this goes through because honestly, as much as I love Doug Baldwin, he's not worth a whole lot more than this. And he has been a thorn in our side so far. Let's go over to the team area. Uh, we can go to the resign page um, because I don't want to lose out on Doug Baldwin. We don't have a ton of depth at receiver. I think Gino Castro is ready to step up into a larger role. And yet Doug Baldwin has not resigned yet. So let's go back to negotiations. I think we can go as high as two fifty. Um, that's thirteen million dollars over four years. This is two million dollars above what he's asking. If he doesn't take this one, folks, we might have to just let him walk and call this off altogether. Sure enough, he has not accepted it. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Do we keep uh, Doug Baldwin? Just keep offering, throwing money at the problem, or do we? Let him walk and and find somewhere else where somebody's willing to pay him. Um, let me know. Bruce Campbell, I think the best thing for us to do is offer him a big contract with no guaranteed money. He wants 14.1 over four years uh, with Michael Roos depreciating a little faster than we'd liked. Um, I don't see Bruce Campbell sticking around with us long term because I would like to draft a left tackle, um, build them up. But um, I think it's important to keep him around in the in the meantime and hopefully offering him $2 million more than he wants it will work. Let's take a look. And he is still negotiating. Let's go ahead, back in negotiations. Let's offer him 4.2. This means that he's now making, or would be making $2.7 uh, $2 million more than he originally wanted. Let's take a look. And he is still negotiating. So let me know, you guys, what do you think about Campbell and Baldwin? I want them back. I assume you guys want them back too because they're both solid pieces that we've developed, brought along. Um, but the reality is they're both just being sticks in the mud right now. And they're, I feel like they're taking advantage of us. And uh, I don't like that. Um, so let me know what you guys think. What's the best option? They don't really have any trade value right now because, of course, the trade deadline is long since come and, come and gone. Uh, so trading them is not an option in the meantime. Um, we can franchise tag, I guess, one of them, but that would be so ludicrously expensive. I don't think it's worth it, to be perfectly honest. Um, as much as that would be nice to, to, to guarantee them uh, uh, or guarantee that they would they would stay Buffalo Bills next season, um, we can, uh, anyways, we, we could figure that out as time goes on. Just let me know what you guys think. Um, we'll be able to find out in a moment who our season game is against tomorrow. And we are in San Diego to take on the Chargers tomorrow. So join us for that in episode 88. In the meantime, let's go ahead. It's time for practice. Practice, practice, practice. Let's go ahead. Which practice session should we choose? Let's go ahead. Uh, we haven't done tied up in a little while. Let's go ahead and tie it up. You're tied at the start of the fourth quarter. 2,000 for success, 1,000 for failure, as is always the case. <laughs> and uh, it is what it is. Let's go ahead. Let's practice today. Um, we've had two games so far, and, and so far the, uh, the reaction has been really positive uh, to the movement of Basman Hooker to the starting role. Um, the first game where, where we gave Hooker the larger role uh, last week, um, there was a lot of positivity uh, in terms of the feedback from that. Uh, this past episode, or this 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 past episode um, from Serial Monday, uh, was not as positive in terms of game output. However, the, I mean the bottom line with that was just the uh, <laughs> the Broncos just did a great job against the run wasn't much more I thought we could really do in that situation. Anyways, practice scenario on. We're going to move our offense or defensive lineman to the left side just a little bit. Quarterback in trouble. What a move. Bada bing, bada boom. Thaddeus Gibson 
getting in your grill, eating your lunch, wonderful stuff, just because it's early and I don't want to forget to do this like I so often do. Let's go ahead, get a Thaddeus Gibson thumbnail right there and now. Bada bing, bada boom. Thumbnailed Gibson with the sack on the first play of practice, bringing up third and 14. And let's go ahead, silver shoot pinch. I like this play, giving uh, us an opportunity to get some heat on the quarterback, spreading our defensive line way out, getting our defensive ends in some space, hopefully getting some pressure. And over the middle, Dominic Rogers Cromarty makes the shoestring tackle. Number 15 came in on the quick in route. Dominic Rogers Cromarty got burned on the route, but made up for it making the shoestring tackle, stopping the flippity flops, uh, on, make, or bringing up fourth and one, and giving Gino Castro an opportunity to return this punt. Not a lot of room around the left side, none around, or around the right side, none around the left. Gino Castro wrapped up for little to no gain on the punt return. Ah, well, that's okay. We'll go ahead here, go shotgun. Um, right now, uh, Basman Hooker is the second running back on the depth chart, but we're getting that carry here, just reversing the, the field of, uh, of play. And he's, tr oh, Michael Roos, buddy. Michael Roos on the outside linebacker loses the block. That goes for a loss of three yards strong flood the next play getting the ball in the air unfortunate stuff would have liked to see us get around the edge there in the meantime though eric baldwin the rookie uh, tight end sensation uh who was brought in uh as the 32nd pick of the 2014 nfl draft um with the hopes that he would be a good future uh, and eventually one day develop into being what uh, essentially Jimmy Graham 2.0. The reality has been that not only has he done that, but he's done it um, with, with with really no prior experience. Um, just this past game, uh, 13 games into the season, uh, Eric Baldwin went over 1,000 yards. He's got exactly 1,000 yards on the season. He's our first 1,000-yard receiver. Oh, Buddies, come on, O-line. Vasquez, Grubbs, Wood. The interior of our offensive line out. They have one linebacker to block, and nobody picks him up. Thanks a freaking lot, you guys. Second and 13 coming up here on that, uh, following that failed screen attempt. We're going to go ahead, go to Deshaun Jackson on the left side. He gets a few yards up the sideline. Jackson, two catches, 22 yards in the practice scenario, up to the 43-yard line of the flippity flops it'd be nice to get a first down here uh in 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 preparation to move the football down the field for a first down um we have called the same play as we had this past time i'm going to edit it a little bit though i want jackson to run um an in route uh, actually no let's get baldwin and jackson running slants opposite one another baldwin's going to come open and he can't hold on to the pass hit by the linebacker and the man who wants to be wildly rich fails to make that one. And on second and eight, I'm, I'm thinking field goal. It's a 60-yarder. This is an insanely long field goal. However, if we can nail this one, I think Greg the Leg has the leg. Oh, and well, we didn't get full power. And this one's not going to be long enough. My mistake. Anyways, I'm fine with that. 50-yard line is where the flippity flops will take over the football. Three receivers set coming up for them. Darn, had we had full power, I think Greg Leg would have had that one. Anyways, disappointing with Doug Baldwin dropping that pass, particularly given his current contract situation. Maybe now he'll realize he's not worth $3.5 million a season. I would say I would put his market value right now at about two point between two and a half and two and two point eight. I was willing to go as high as three basically out of the gate because Manningham's making two and a half and Baldwin brings more to the table and blah 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 blah. But man, he's been disappointing. Um who's not disappointing is Eric Baldwin. Again, rookie sensation tight end. A thousand yards as a rookie is nothing to shake a stick at. He's the first thousand yard receiver. The Buffalo Bills have had since we took them over in 2013, uh, and he's just phenomenal. 
in virtually everything that he does on this team. He blocks well. He, he, he's a consistent pass catcher. He's a consistent route runner. He's a consistent just about everything. And he also takes his, his grandmother for groceries once a week uh, on his spare time, which, is, which, which just goes to show the amazing individual he is. Um, Flippity Flops running off the left side. Sanford can't get out, but Kirkpatrick does. Wraps up the running back for a four-yard gain. About one uh, minute, one second left in the practice scenario. The Flippity Flops call a timeout, and at this point, it might be in our best interest to just let the Flippity Flops score. The Flippity Flops, by the way, have really had our number as of late. I think they've won three straight practices, including our last practice session that was an epic uh, uh, an uh, an epic for the ages, I would <laughs> is how I would have to describe it. Um, we had uh, the crazy drive, uh, if you remember, uh, that we put together. We had the amazing last second uh, Deshaun Jackson catch. It was just an amazing thing to behold, and unfortunately, the defense gave up a touchdown at the end of it. Looking looking nice here, though. Fourth and three, got some nice run support on that play. Um, and at the 14-yard line, the Flippity Flops are going to have to kick a field goal. So we'll have 54 seconds to try and drive the drive the field. If we can't score a touchdown, which might be tough given that we don't have any timeouts, though we did do it last time um, with, I think, 54 seconds on the clock, um, we, uh, we, can, we, we can still tie this one up with a field goal. So ball is coming down to Jacoby Ford, who's, whose returns have gotten a lot better. Castro's cooled off as the season's gone on. Ford has just gotten hotter. Not a lot of room for him there, though. Freeman uh, in the neighborhood on the block. Uh, let's go ahead. We, we got to go shotgun here. Don't think we have much of a choice. Uh, let's go Bill's curl flat. Uh, I want to edit out of some of these curls just because they're not of a ton of use um, in this situation. We'll get Williams running the wheel route. He's not going to get enough separation, but Jackson does. Ball thrown behind him, but he still makes a nice catch. 19 yards up to the 41-yard line. What I like about that play um, is that it gets us uh, just about 20 yards out of Greg the Leg range. Uh, granted, that would be extreme range, but even then, 20 yards, uh, and we're just going to throw this one. Baldwin makes – no, he drops it. So Doug Baldwin comes into today's game after denying or, 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 or refusing a, a contract worth more than $13 million over four seasons. And then is thrown to twice, drops both passes. boy, Your mother must be so proud. Eric Baldwin, meanwhile, just keep keeps quietly doing what he does best. Eric Baldwin is a rookie this season, probably making no more than $1.2 million. Um, yeah, just, just steps up, does what he does because he's a consummate professional. Maybe we could have uh, Eric Baldwin just have a, have a little sit down with Doug Baldwin. Saying, hey, buddy, you need to be less of a dick. Here, Jacoby Ford makes the catch, but it's thrown way behind him despite the fact that he's wide open. And so on fourth and two, we're going to have to go for it here. Let's get Ford running. Uh, uh, no, Baldwin, does he come open? A chance to make it all better, and he fails to stay in bounds. So Doug Baldwin fails uh, uh, today. Let's see. Let's let, let's try and see if he could actually have stayed in bounds on that play. He did get open. There he had one foot. Eh, he could have put both feet down. So Doug Baldwin, after turning down a big contract offer, um, thrown to twice early on, drops both passes there with the practice scenario on the line. Can't keep his feet in bounds. And that is how we will end today, folks. We got five, four, three. Flippity flops come out. They're going to take another knee. Not even time. 10-7, the final score. The practice scenario. Bills lose, I think, their third straight practice, which is not good. Not the habit we want to get into when we're developing players. Anyways, that's a wrap for today, folks. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow for our game uh, against the San Diego Chargers. Until then, I'm Tuxedo T-Shirt, and I'm out.